What's up guys, uh, Jeff here and welcome back to the weekly update right here on DecoCrete TV. Um, today's episode, we're gonna be talking about concrete sealers versus coatings. Um, how do they work, what do they do, and why should we use one over another? So stay tuned and we're gonna tell you all about it. So after the last two videos, uh, we should all know all about what solid content is and all about carrying agents and solvents. And um, you know, if you guys missed the last two videos, uh, please click the link right here and then uh, pick this video back up where you left off. And so um, now it's time to talk about the actual resin, uh, the part that stays behind, because uh, that's the important thing, right? That's what's actually gonna stay on the concrete. Uh, so to get things started, we're gonna have to separate things into two groups, um, acrylic sealers and concrete coatings and um, so we're gonna start uh, with these guys right here acrylic sealers so uh, acrylic sealers um, well they actually start out as as a solid um, substance you know acrylic is something that was actually it started its life as a solid substance it gets melted down into a, uh, a sealer and then it gets spread out and so it's almost that if you think about it like dissolving sugar into water you had something solid you dissolved it into a liquid and now it's just sitting there hanging out kind of like um, you know that muddy water and now last week um, where once that curing agent uh, evaporates off um, that's that actual resin is going to want to actually harden up on its own it doesn't need any kind of chemical reaction doesn't need a part B or a hardener or anything like that so it's basically it's going to form that film all by itself doesn't need anything else the next thing about uh, acrylic sealers is that because of the chemical makeup and uh, their low viscosity, they're going to bond directly to concrete. Um, they don't need any kind of profile or any open pores or anything like that. Now, keep in mind, uh, the more open the pores are, the better this stuff's going to stick and actually the longer it's going to last, but they are definitely made to spray directly onto concrete. Uh, the other thing about acrylic sealers, again, uh, go back to that the chemical makeup of the actual resin itself. And, you know, if we looked at a concrete sealer versus a concrete coating, you know, kind of under a microscope, um, you know, we think about it like almost like there's little air pockets in there. And so the acrylic sealer, well, those air pockets are definitely bigger and there's more of them and it's actually going to let moisture pass up through them. Now, don't get me wrong, you can make an acrylic sealer unbreathable really fast uh, by over applying it and putting way too much on, but as it goes, if they're put out the proper thickness, um, they will actually be breathable. That film is a little bit less dense than a coating was, and um, it will, that means it's gonna be a little bit softer, so it will actually wear away over time, and um, it's gonna break down um, just, you know, from weather, from, from foot traffic, from driving on it, whatever it might be. So these things, um, they're gonna wear away, and they're gonna need to be recoded at a certain point. Now, the great thing about acrylic resin, and we learned this last week, uh, that we can actually take a solvent and we can actually melt that resin down. And um, whether we're trying to clear out some moisture or whether we're trying to bond to it, um, we don't need to uh, put that existing uh, sealer through any kind of an abrasion uh, process. We can just clean everything up, spray this stuff right on. And um, you know, as long as we have a similar resin as the one we started to, um, they're actually gonna bond to themselves really good without any kind of abrasion. So now we're gonna move on to concrete coatings and uh, you know these are things like uh, epoxy or polyurethane or polyaspartic and uh, the thing is you know these coatings uh, well they don't always necessarily start their life out as that solid substance um, as a matter of fact uh, a lot of this stuff is actually a byproduct of some other sort of manufacturing process that happened before that and so what that means is that these aren't gonna just uh, get hard on their own um, you know if we let these things just the carrying agents evaporate out of these things uh, just the resin itself well we're still gonna have a goo left over and we actually need something to start a chemical reaction to actually cause that film to form and get hard and uh, generally that's why we have a part A and a part B. We mix them together and that, that process starts and that's where our film comes from and honestly even this guy right here rock hard urethane um, even though there's no part B to mix with that uh, well it's still a two-part coating in the sense that um, it's what's called a moisture cure urethane and it's uh, what it's doing is once we spread it out uh, it's actually looking for moisture in the air and it's grabbing that moisture and that's what's starting that reaction and uh, so even though there's only one jug uh, it's still considered a two-part product now uh, what's Go back to that uh, chemical makeup for a second. We talked about acrylic sealers getting into um, a concrete concrete coatings. Um, well, you know, epoxy, urethane, polyspartic, you know, those are all different resins across the board, but 
they do have one thing in common is that those this resin, the film that it's gonna leave behind is gonna be a lot more dense than these acrylic sealers were. And uh, so what that means is that we're gonna actually have to have some really open pores in the concrete or maybe even a profile into the concrete in order for this stuff to actually grab onto. Uh, if we were gonna just put a concrete coating right on just unprepped concrete, well, it's not really gonna hold up long term. The film will still form, Everything's gonna seem like it's going great uh, for a little while, but it's just not really gonna grab on and, and, and really last. And uh, so with that being said, um, that's gonna also affect breathability. So, you know, denser coating, less of those air pockets. You know, we talked about these air pockets or there's more of them and they're a little bit bigger. It's letting moisture pass up through. Well, this stuff, not so much. Um, denser coating, it's gonna be way less breathable, which means it's also gonna be very um, intolerant of moisture. In fact, to the point where if we get a buildup of moisture underneath the slab, um, it's gonna hit this coating. And if that point pressure gets too great, well, it's gonna end up actually failing this coating. It's gonna make it pop off because it's not letting that uh, pass up through it. Now, um, one of the other things about uh, a coating that's that dense that comes from an actual two-part product is that um, you know we're not gonna be able to melt into that. It actually creates a really hard, durable coating, uh, and that's why we love it for top coats on top of metallic epoxy. Uh, it's great for creating um, you know, chip broadcast floors and really, really durable flooring systems. Um, now, the downside of that is that if we ever decide to recoat that, well, we're not just gonna be able to slap a coat right on it. We're actually gonna have to put that through some abrasion process. Um, usually there's some kind of sanding or something like that that's gonna have to uh, go on in order to actually get this to stick to, to itself. It's kind of like when we um, trying to stick it to concrete, we had to open up that concrete pores to get this stuff to actually grab on. Well, if we're gonna apply a coating to a coating, we're also gonna have to create a little bit of abrasion in that surface uh, in order to get these things to grab on. And I think you guys can see why, you know, we wouldn't use these products outdoors. Um, you know, we gotta grind the concrete. We're not gonna do that outside, uh, especially not on stamped concrete. Um, you know, they're not very moisture tolerant. Um, in fact, some of them aren't even UV stable. And so acrylic sealers on the other hand, well, no, these are great for outdoors. And, and you know, they're not gonna be that great for a long, long-term floor that's never gonna get recoded. And so hopefully this helps you guys um, understand, um, you know, the difference between a concrete sealer and a coating and, you know, why you would use one over the other. Um, if you guys like this video, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you got any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments right below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.